Well, you've learned cellular respiration twice before. You were first introduced to it in Chapter 3, then again in Chapter 10 when we learned about muscles. Now we're going to take more of a big picture look at cellular respiration. If we kind of do an overview of the basics, we know that it starts with glucose, which is C6H12O6. Now, you can also use amino acids and fatty acids. But we're not going to worry about going through all the chemistry of those processes. We're just going to focus on glucose. So if we look at our glucose, we know that we're going to take the hydrogen out. You use hydrogen to make ATP on the electron transport chain. So the main idea is to get that hydrogen extracted out. And that's what you do in the first two steps. So the main thing that's happening in glycolysis and Krebs is you are breaking the glucose so that you can get at the hydrogen and send it to the electron transport chain. And that's where you get the majority of your ATP. And remember, the hydrogen will basically push the ADP and the P together so that you get ATP. So remember, ADP is adenosine diphosphate, and then you add that extra P onto it, and you have adenosine triphosphate. Once you get the hydrogen out, you are left with six carbons and six oxygens because it's C6H12O6. So you take the 12 hydrogens out, you have six carbon and six oxygen left. These are waste. So you have to take in six molecules of oxygen and this is what your lungs get from the air then you will have six carbons from the glucose six oxygens from the glucose and you will have Twelve oxygens from the air, and you have your twelve hydrogens after they go through the electron transport chain. All of this now gets made into six carbon dioxides and six waters. So you take your six carbon, your six oxygen from the glucose, you take six of these oxygens, I'm sorry, there's not a two there. It's just 12 oxygens because six times two is 12. And this is what gives you your six CO2 and then you take the other six oxygens and your 12 hydrogens, and that is what gives you your six 
water. So if we look at this in kind of more of a big picture, you're going to eat glucose. So we have glucose is C6H12O6. This is in your food, so you eat this. You also inhale oxygen. So now you have glucose and you have oxygen that have gone into you. All you do is break down the glucose you break up that oxygen and you rearrange it into two new things. So you're going to end up with six carbon dioxide. That six carbon dioxides are going to have one carbon and one oxygen from the glucose and one oxygen from the oxygen that you inhaled. Then you also get six water. The hydrogens in the water are from the glucose, and the oxygen in the water is from the oxygen that you inhaled. So these are what come back out. So you eat food, and you get glucose. You breathe, and you get oxygen. Then you rearrange those molecules. You exhale carbon dioxide, and you urinate water. So what goes in comes out. You just rearrange in between. So you have glucose and oxygen go in. You rearrange them into carbon dioxide and water. Your payment for doing this rearrangement is 36 ATP and body heat. So this is kind of what's commonly referred to as your metabolic rate. How fast you do this. And there's a couple of ways to measure metabolic rate. So think about this carefully. You have things going in, you have things coming out. Two of the main ways to measure metabolic rate are to measure the oxygen that goes in and then remember your payment is 36 ATP and body heat to measure the heat you produce. So one way to measure metabolic rate is they put you in a tub of water. And your body heat will make the water warm up. They can measure how much you warm up the water and use that to calculate how much cellular respiration you're doing. The other common way to measure metabolic rate is oxygen consumption. So you can go into a sealed room. 
That way they know how much oxygen was in that room when you entered and they can measure how much oxygen is in that room when you're done. So they measure the oxygen, they put you in the room, and they measure how much oxygen you take out of the air. Because every time you do cellular respiration, you're using six oxygens. So they can calculate how many oxygens you took out of the air and then know how much cellular respiration you did. All right, so there you go. There's the basics of how you get ATP and body heat and how you can measure that.